Do you know that breeding delivers 67% of your annual yield growth? How does it sound to you? Interesting? Yes, of course that is interesting. That's why you are here today to learn more about that. And because of that reason, we will see later some more figures. Rapeseed 2030. I would like to know, hand up, who knows what he will do in six years? Maybe another question, who knows how many rapeseed he will grow in 2030? Our rapeseed breeders, they have to know that. They have to believe on a vision and work hard for that, otherwise they will never achieve something. Let me tell you now at the beginning a small story what rapeseed breeding means to me. It was in summer 2022. I got a phone call from my breeding colleague from Poland, Dr. Tomasz Mikulski, and we spoke about this typical stuff of uh, first trial results, yield trends, new candidates for the next season. We also spoke about these post-registration trials in Slovakia, and I explained him our four candidates for the next season, and he said to me, René, you have to replace one of them. I have a new candidate for you. And I say to him, Tomasz, come on. That is not that easy. Can you imagine this kind of awful discussions with the colleagues? Why this hybrid and not that hybrid? And he just said to me again, René, trust me. It took me several emails, video calls, some awful discussions and a bloody nose. But we made it, the hybrid was in. It was then later Christmas time, the rapeseed catalog of Rapul, Slovakia, was more or less finished. And I got another phone call from Tomasz Mikulski. He immediately asked me, René, is the hybrid in? And I said, come on, Tomasz, that is not that easy. We know nothing about that hybrid in the performance in, in Slovakia. The hybrid is outside in the trials. Let's see and wait. And he just said, René, trust me. We made it, to say it, but it took me another bloody nose. It was then summer last year, 2023. To be honest, most of this discussion I already forgot. And then I got a phone call from my young breeding, from my young product manager colleague in Slovakia, a young guy. And he came immediately to the point, René, you have to come to Slovakia. Half of Slovakia has lodging, cereals, rapeseed, it doesn't matter, except one hybrid. Ladies and gentlemen, I was touched. I booked a flight ticket for the next morning, get up 3.30, go to Hamburg Airport, take a flight to Vienna, rental car, go to Bratislava, to the east, to see that picture. Ladies and gentlemen, that means breeding to me, to believe on a vision, to work hard for that, and to realize the solutions of the challenge of tomorrow. My name is René Brandt. I'm international product manager in Rapul since 2015. And today I'm here to support you in the next 40 minutes to enrich you, which you probably will realize at the end of my presentation. Together we will have a look to the achievements of rapeseed breeding in the last years. I will show you what we are doing outside right now in the fields. And together we will have a look on the impact of precision breeding in rapeseed. Yield progress is usually a combination of fertilization, of seeds, of pesticides, machinery, consulting. It's a, it's a complex, it's quite difficult to, 
to say how important is breeding for the farmers. Luckily, I found a new research paper made by an independent agency in uh, Germany based on a request from Euroseeds. And they analyzed the available data from 2000 to 2019. And they found out that breeding is important for 67% of this annual yield growth. We can also say breeding delivers 1.1, 1.2% yield progress per year. We see now here on this graph the major crops in the European Union. We see with this yellow color this innovation introduced yield progress and in the green color somehow the yield progress which is then finally visible outside on the fields. We see from 60 to 75 percent, it depends a little bit between the crops. We see then here the, the share of breeding in this process. And we see also for oilseed rape, there is a big difference. So the question is, what is here the reason that the yield progress of rapeseed is not coming to the field? I think it is worth now to make a step to one of the major countries for rapeseed breeding, my home area, Germany. We can see very nice that we realized in the last 50 years an improvement of, yeah, we doubled the yield twice and realized from two tons now on a level of four tons. Based on this successful story, we can also see this increase of the acreage and, yeah, rapeseed as an uh, important crop in the crop rotation in Germany. But we also see that with this loss of the insecticide seed treatment in 2014, with the ban of the neonics, that we had a big challenge in rapeseed. In the following years, we lost in each year 10% yield till we dropped down in 2018 on a level of less than three tons. Luckily, with this... Uh, uh, efforts of breeding, and that started somehow with the 2000, 2010, with this resistance breeding. We could bring more new innovations to the market. And luckily with turnip yellow virus, we made a big comeback, not only in Germany, also for the whole European market. And we can see how the yield was then further increasing till 2022-23. So the question is now, is everything fine or based off this picture? Unfortunately not. European rapeseed farmers, and I think also here in this audience, Lithuanian rapeseed farmers, they struggle with quite a lot of challenges. We have at first this climate challenge. In general, precipitation over the whole year is okay for rapeseed production. Unfortunately, we have in the summer more and more dry conditions, and then in the winter time, more mild and wet uh, situation. But there is another challenge, environment. Rapeseed is struggling in autumn time in many countries with flea beetle. And I think when I say here in Lithuania that the rapeseed farmers struggle more and more with these uh, stem weevils in springtime, not really something new for you. Another challenge, this, this economi economical situation. Based on these more and more volatile markets, we see this kind of high input cost, fertilizers, pesticides, energy, and on the other side, uh, yeah, a big variation in, in the commodity price. Very difficult to, to plan that and make a successful rapeseed production. And then the last point, yeah, of course, I think also here in Lithuania, the situation and, and the feeling with the politics is not really positive. Also here we had strikes in the last uh, uh, weeks and uh, yeah, 
more and more limitations are coming. Limitations for fertilization, limitations for pesticides, also not really easy for successful rapeseed production. And based on all of these challenges and limitations, restrictions, personally, I see only one point here to make new approaches and solutions for you, for the farmers, that is resistance breeding. How we are realizing that in Rapul, luckily, with one of the largest breeding networks in Europe, you can see here that we have several breeding stations and testing stations from West Europe to East Europe. We cover different climatic conditions and growing conditions, and we can uh, select for plant health in the same time like we select for more and more stress tolerance against climate uh, uh, effects. Um, also interesting, based on this huge breeding network, we are able to make more and more targeted crossing of genetics from Western Europe with these plant health, together with this stress tolerance in Eastern Europe. Gives interesting new candidates, which we will see later. So, yeah, just a question of time that we can bring the next generation of hybrids here to the Baltics.